Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that the City of Hamilton is situated on the traditional territory of the Erie, Neutral, Hurawandat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Uh, we further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase, 1792, between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the Credit of the First Nation. So on behalf of the City of Hamilton, I'd like to uh, welcome Premier Ford back to Hamilton alongside our Member of Parliament, Donna Skelly, in advance of opening a large-scale COVID-19 vaccination clinic right here at the First Ontario Centre. Uh, beginning on Monday, March the 22nd, the First Ontario Centre Clinic will expand our local vaccination program. At its capacity, this clinic can administer approximately 3,000 vaccines per day. And under the steadfast management of Hamilton's Public Health Services, in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton, the Hamilton Health Sciences, the primary care physicians, and the Hamilton Paramedic Services, this clinic plays an important role in our fight against COVID-19. I'd also like to thank uh, Global Spectrum for their cooperation and collaboration on making this happen. Uh, this is a facility managed by Global Spectrum and certainly their help and collaboration has also made it very possible. Uh, we are pleased that the Ontario government is here today recognizing the hard work and dedication of our public health teams. Under the leadership of Dr. Elizabeth Richardson, uh, just recently uh, designated a Distinguished Woman of the Year right here in Hamilton. Very deserving uh, a designation for sure, and we're very proud of the work she's doing and has done and continues to do. Having said that, with the constraints of the vaccine supply, our teams continue to make great progress in vaccinating residents as per the provincial rollout plan. So as of this morning, 62,619 doses of the vaccine have been administered in the city of Hamilton. And we know people are eager to get vaccinated, and that's why we're doing additional clinics throughout our community. Our commitment, and I'm sure the province's commitment, is to getting the vaccine into the arms of as many Hamiltonians as quickly as possible. So we are ready and look forward to receiving more vaccines in the weeks to come. Uh, I do want to say and, and shout out uh, and, and, and send my gratitude to the Premier for his unwavering leadership during this pandemic. Uh, I can only imagine how challenging it has been for him and his team to uh, try and get a smooth rollout of not only the, uh, the impacts of our pandemic, but the vaccinations as we, uh, as we roll it out now. And having that all converge all at the same time is no easy task. And I just want to tip my hat to the Premier for a great job uh, under very, very difficult circumstances. So now it's my pleasure to welcome the Premier of Ontario to the, to the podium, Premier Doug Ford. Premier? That's great, and, and thank you so much, uh, Mayor Eisenberger, for the kind introduction and for everything you're doing here in Hamilton. I'll tell you, folks, when I, I took a look around here, it's impressive. It's absolutely uh, amazing uh, through the mayor's leadership and Dr. Richardson's leadership and the whole team uh, putting this together. I'd also like to give a, a shout out to my MPP, Donna Skelly. I, I can tell the people of Hamilton, she's a fierce advocate for Hamilton, an absolute champion at, at Queen's Park. It's great to be here at First Ontario Centre to see the Mass Immunization Clinic, which will open to the public on Monday. I want to take a minute to recognize some of the incredible people who are making this clinic possible. And it's a, it's a really big team all working together, and that's the key word, working together. Uh, Jeanette Smith. Dr. Elizabeth Richardson, and by the way, congratulations on uh, being the uh, Woman of the Year, uh, Paul Johnson and Michelle Baird, plus everyone at the Hamilton Public Health Services, St. Joseph's Healthcare, and Hamilton Health Services, and all of the volunteers who will staff this clinic. Thanks to each and every one of you. While we count down to the opening of this clinic, I'm pleased to report that our public response to our vaccine rollout has been absolutely enormous. On the day it launched, Ontario's vaccine portal set up over, and this is pretty staggering. You know, you get a couple of bumps in the road on the, on the first uh, uh, a day, but just think of this. Over 133,000 appointments province-wide for those 80 plus, 9,000 appointments right here in Hamilton alone. 
we continue to book new appointments and today we have over 225,000 vaccine appointments booked through the provincial booking system. Let me just uh, put that into perspective. That's just the provincial booking system. Uh, as I met with the general this morning, he told me close to 400,000 appointments have been booked. So thank you to the, all the great uh, folks doing that. Thank you to everyone who has signed up and to everyone else for being patient until it comes your turn. At full capacity, this clinic here will administer 3,000 vaccines a day and we're on our way to being able to administer 150,000 doses per day across the province. And that's just the beginning, my friends. But as I keep saying, that all depends on one thing, the supply of vaccines. As you can see behind me, the infrastructure is in place and we're ready. Thanks to the drive and determination of Team Ontario, our capacity to administer vaccines is steadily increasing as we open up new mass immunization sites, ramp up our pharmacies, get doses into doctors' offices, and activate our mobile clinics. Because of these efforts, we're making tremendous progress. In fact, as of last night, nearly 50% of all residents age 80 or older have now received at least their first dose. That's just absolutely remarkable. But we can do much more. We have the ability to administer over 4.8 million doses per month. And again, that's a conservative figure. But in March, we've only received enough supply to do just over 1.6 million. Clearly, this math doesn't add, add up. We need the federal government to step up and ensure we get enough doses to fulfill our ability to deliver. In the meantime, I encourage Ontarians 80 years and over to book a vaccine appointment. Visit Ontario.ca slash book vaccine or call 1-888-999-6488. That's 1-888-999-6488. And I'm, I'm gonna go back to you know the, this call center. They're, they've done an incredible job. I wanna thank all 2,200 uh, operators and the wait time uh, last uh, 24 hours, they told me, is less than a minute. So they're pumping it out, and I'm going to put it into perspective again. You know, with uh, California has 40 million people, they have a thousand operators. Quebec has eight and a half million people, they have 600 operators. Ontario, 15 million people, 2,200 operators. So they're they're doing a great job. They have a, a relative or a friend. Uh, if you could assist them to make an appointment, it'd be greatly appreciated, folks. This light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter every single day, thanks to our great work from our, our mayors, regions across the province, the public health units. And I gotta give a shout out too to the paramedics, all the hospitals, the, the docs and the nurses. Uh, you're the champions. So thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to MPP Skelly. Thank you, Premier. I am so pleased to be here at First Ontario Centre this afternoon to see firsthand how much effort has gone on to creating this large-scale vaccination site. Now, if there is adequate supply, and that is the key, if our government is capable of vaccinating 150,000 people per day. In fact, this site alone can vaccinate up to 3,000 people per day right here if and only if the federal government comes through and delivers the vaccines. You know, a small army of staff has been working tirelessly to put this clinic together and above all, to ensure that the public is safe. What we see today and what we will see over the next number of months is the result of the collaborative effort by St. Joe's Healthcare, Hamilton Health Sciences, Hamilton Paramedics and primary care physicians. And of course, the Hamilton Public Health Department under the leadership of Dr. Elizabeth Richardson and the city with Paul Johnson. I've often said Hamilton is a big city with a small town heart. Our city was built by hardworking men and women in the steel industry. People whose strength, resolve and compassion laid the groundwork for what we see today. A community that has put aside our differences and come together for the greater good. And that is one of the reasons I'm so proud to call Hamilton home. If you present a challenge to the people in this city, they will rise to the occasion. 
They will go above and beyond what needs to be done, and they'll do it with grit and determination. Most importantly, people in this city are driven to help because they sincerely care about the well-being of others, especially the most vulnerable. I want to share an experience, my parents' experience, at a mobile vaccination site in Hamilton last week. Understandably, because they're elderly, my mother just turned 90, they were a little nervous. But they told me as soon as they walked in, the staff made them feel very comfortable. They were kind and caring and helped them through every step of the process. The staff at the vaccine clinics made what my parents thought would be intimidating into a very easy experience for them and the other elderly residents. And for that, a sincere thank you. Because of all of your efforts, the vaccine rollout in Hamilton will be a success. Thank you. We'll go to the phone line now for questions. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up, please. First question from Sean Stuffers at the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Sean. Good afternoon, Premier. I wanted to ask you about um, a request that both the Medical Officer of Health in Toronto and Peel made yesterday regarding the COVID-19 framework. They're asking that they remain in grey lockdown, but there, there be uh, modifications made that would allow um, some businesses to reopen um, outdoors, like uh, restaurants uh, with outdoor service and uh, fitness gyms with outdoor, again, activities. I'm wondering if you're considering this and uh, what that might look like in the framework. Well, I know Dr. Williams and, and uh, Dr. Davila and Dr. Lowell are in full communications. Uh, would I be in favor of uh, letting people get outside and get some air? And absolutely, I, I would be. But again, um, I'm sticking by what I've said right from the beginning. I'm, I'm sticking with the health and the science. And uh, if all three doctors agree, then we'll, we'll take their advice and, and move forward. Uh, and along, and by the way, not just the doctors, but uh, the mayors too. The mayors play a critical role. So if, uh, again, if the mayor of Mississauga, Brampton, Calden, and the mayor of Toronto want this, then, uh, then we move forward on it. Follow up. Thank you. Premier, I asked you this the other day um, it, the, about the NASI recommendations, and I realized it was quite, uh, quite new at that point. I'm wondering, now that you've had a, a couple of days to look at this, how uh, that change is going to impact the province's vaccine rollout, and specifically, if AstraZeneca is going to be now used to uh, give immunizations to people between 65 and 80, and when we might expect that change if it's going to take place. Yeah, so they, as, as I said the other day, they kind of changed the goalposts and I had a good conversation with the folks here uh, in the logistics side of it. When you change the goalposts, it's amazing how, uh, you know, things things uh, have to change on, on making sure that we roll this out. But uh, we want to get going on it as soon as possible. I think it's good news that we can uh, use uh, AstraZeneca for 60 plus all the way up. And uh, I think it just gives us more flexibility and more ammunition to get needles into people's arms. Next question. From Graham Richardson at CTV Ottawa. Please go ahead. Hi, Graham. Uh, Premier, uh, Ottawa moving into the red uh, with uh, an increasing caseload. There's some suggestion, given that there's, I think, today 21 people in hospital, five people in ICU in the city with uh, COVID that uh, the case count is not the only measure. Uh, what caused your government to, and the health table to uh, immediately uh, move Ottawa to red? Well, the request from Dr. Etches, uh, and by the way, uh, Dr. Etches is just doing an incredible job out in Ottawa. Uh, they're in full communications with Dr. Williams. That was a request, and, and uh, we always uh, listen to the local medical officer of health. So, you know, folks, um, you know, let, let's just follow uh, medical advice, the protocols, and this is no time to let our guard down. I'll tell you, uh, we have to keep our guard up more than ever before, and uh, we have to make sure that we uh, immunize as many people as possible. And, and who's doing it? Uh, an incredible job is Ottawa. I use them as an example. I'll use Hamilton too. I had a meeting with General Hillier for about an hour, getting a briefing on on all the regions right across the province and. And I got to give a shout out to Hamilton. He said they're just incredible. Uh, everyone moves at a, a different uh, speed, all 34 uh, public health units. Uh, some are moving a little quicker. And, 
in Hamilton, uh, he said they're just knocking it out of the park. But I go back to it starts with the leadership of the mayor, leadership of Dr. Richardson and her uh, whole team, uh, and the collaboration. When, when hospitals and public health units and the paramedics and uh, everyone's getting along, working collaboratively, this is an example of the result. So I want to congratulate everyone here in Hamilton. Follow up. I also wanted to ask you, this may sound like an odd question, and I apologize if it does. That's all right. uh, there is a lot of talk in the United States and in parts of uh, different parts of the world questioning whether lockdowns work. I'm, a, I'm not asking you to comment, obviously, on the United States. It's a different, it's a different thing. Different beast. But Toronto and Peel and York, I mean, they have been under restrictions longer than any place in North America, I believe. And it doesn't seem to have worked to bring the cases down. Is below a thousand, for instance, if you combine the three of them. Sure. Have you considered, has your government considered whether, and I'm not saying this is the case, sure. whether lockdowns actually work or are they more harmful than they are worth? Yeah, Graham, good question. You could look at it both both sides. Uh, I've always taken the advice of the health and health and, and science uh, when it comes to this, and we we saw our numbers really climb up there to uh, a certain point. And uh, when we do when we did the lockdown, they seem to come down. Uh, but I, again, um, it depends on what view you you take. Some people uh, may think it's okay just to open it wide open and you know every man woman and child for themselves i don't believe that i believe we have to be super cautious and i've heard stories that a lot of people haven't heard you know i've heard of uh, younger uh, people uh, getting covid and and just changing their lives some uh, passed away un unfortunately so this is uh, this is very serious uh, we need to continue following the protocols and as we open up very very slowly um, with the advice of the medical officer, local medical officers, chief medical officer, I think that's the, the right way to, to go. The more people uh, we, we can get uh, immunized, uh, I think the better it is. But I've heard some people say, you know, it's a, it's a race against the, the virus versus immunization. The virus wins every single time, folks, every single time. Um, you know, it goes at a faster pace than we can immunize. But in saying that, uh, we're giving it everything we can. The more vaccines we get, the more people will be vaccinated, the more or less people will be at risk. And we've seen it in long-term care. Um, you know, we, we have a vast majority of people with their double doses in, in long-term care done. Uh, we're working on seniors' residents. And the, the drop of mortality has been drastic. You know, you see one or two, and as far as I'm concerned, one or two or too many. Uh, some days are zero. So let, let's just keep uh, moving forward. But folks, it's, it's up to all, everyone, myself, all, all of Ontarians, to follow the protocols. The quicker we get through this, the better it's going to be. Next question. From Joanna Spaketich at Hamilton Spectator. Please go ahead. Hi, Joanna. Uh, hi, thanks so much for taking my question Thank today. Um, Premier, Hamilton is seeing what our medical officer of health has called concerning trends in our COVID numbers. Are you considering a lockdown here and what would trigger that? Well, I, I would again, I go always back to the medical officer, the local medical officer's advice with communicating with Dr. Williams and uh, then I'll take their advice and we, we act on, on that. And uh, I've always said from, from day one, I've, I've been so fortunate to have some of the greatest medical minds uh, here in the province. I consider them the best in the world, and I'll, I'll never waver from uh, listening to them. Uh, they understand. Uh, they understand both sides. You know, I've, I've heard some comments out there that, you know, some medical officers will lock us down for another year. Um, I'll have to disagree. They're very pragmatic. They understand mental health. They understand, you know, young people have to get out and get some fresh air in, not just young people, but, uh, you know, everyone needs to get out and you know, life has to move forward, but we have to do it cautiously. So I'm fortunate, I'm grateful, and I, I just want to thank uh, all, all the health professionals that have been giving us advice from day one. Follow up. 
Um, and uh, Premier, I'd like to ask you about LRT. Is the province willing to increase its $1 billion commitment to a Hamilton LRT project if the federal government is willing to match a higher dollar amount for a longer transit line? Yeah, we're, we're working hand in hand with the federal government, working uh, with the mayor as well, and the mayor has been a champion on this. So we're, we're working hand in hand with them, and I, we're going to get there right from day one. Even before I got elected, I said we'd uh, commit a, a billion dollars uh, to make sure that we support the people of Hamilton. And uh, let's see how these talks uh, move forward. I just it'd be a little premature to say if we're going to give a little more. At the end of the day, I want what the mayor wants, what council wants, what, um, you know, what the people want. So that, that's, uh, I always, uh, coming from the municipality, nothing used to drive me more crazy than, than the province dictating what people get and what people don't get if it comes to infrastructure. I, we've taken a different approach. We yeah. rely on the municipalities to tell us, you know, what their their community wants because no one knows their community better than the local MPPs, MPs and councillors and, and the mayor. So I'll always fo follow the lead of uh, Mayor Eisenberger and, and uh, the council and our MPPs. Next question. From Ryan Tamilti at National Post. Please go ahead. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, good afternoon, Premier. Um, next week, we're set to, as a country, get uh, 2 million doses of vaccine. Um, and going forward, the, the rate of um, deliveries is set to be pretty high. But there's also lots of questions. You know, there's possibility of export restrictions in Europe and uh, similar moves in the, in the U.S. I'm wondering if you've designed enough flexibility uh, into your vaccine uh, delivery system so that if uh, deliveries go up or down in a given week that you can adjust? Yeah, that's an excellent question. We actually have that conversation came up with my hour briefing with General Hillier. Uh, you, we've, been, we've been used to this. You know, at the beginning in February, we were getting it. We'd boost things up and all of a sudden we found out we weren't getting as much, so we had to bring it back down. Uh, all we want is consistency. It's great news that uh, the country is is getting uh, two million. That leaves us with about eight hundred thousand. Uh, but yeah, we we can we can move on a dime. If we wanted just to go full out, say we had endless supplies, just put these numbers into perspective. Uh, you know, we have thirty two hundred pharmacies uh, that we can ramp up in, in a matter of you know five, six, seven days. So let's just use three thousand at at fifty. Uh, a day, and that's super conservative. Uh, that's 150,000 just on the pharmacies. Uh, this this mass uh, vaccination center can do 3,000. We have 233 that can ramp up instantly. So again, you can do the uh, the, the math. Not mentioning the mobile units uh, and primary care uh, docs as as well, paramedics out there. So if we if we have the vaccines and it's just full throttle. We, we can bang out seven, eight, nine million in, in a month if we go full steam. Uh, but right now, we, we just need the vaccines. That, that's what it comes to. Follow up. Yeah, and you have about uh, 400,000 uh, vaccines uh, that have been delivered and, and yet to be administered yet. You're getting another, like you said, 800,000 uh, next week. Are, are you confident you'll be able to handle that demand in the yes. next couple of weeks? Yes, we are. We're uh, very confident we'll be able to uh, handle that moving forward, especially if we see uh, a consistent flow of vaccines. We'll be able to gear up. The, the worst thing that, that happens, we think we're going to get some, and all of a sudden the numbers change, and we have to bring everything back down. It's a massive, massive undertaking, no matter if it's here in, in Hamilton or any other region that I've gone to. The amount of people behind the scenes uh, they, they number into the hundreds in a lot of cases, helping out, you know, getting everything together. And then all of a sudden, if we have to ramp it down, that, that's not good. I believe in ramping things up and, and don't stop and keep ramping them up. But uh, as long as we have consistency and, you know, you get a few days notice to, to get everyone ramped up and ready, then we're, we're good to go. Last question. From Randy Rath at CHKH TV. Please go ahead. How you doing? Hi, Premier. Welcome to Hamilton. Yeah, uh, thank you. I have to ask about Sam Osterhoff. Uh, yes. You had a, a discussion with him on Monday night, yes. I believe. 
um, and he went ahead and spoke to this um, this group that uh, had, had compared the uh, the Holocaust. What did you say to him, and what do you make of him speaking to that group? Well, I've, I've said to all my MPPs, I, I'm never uh, one to dictate on what their beliefs are. They're all independent uh, thinkers, and and thank God they 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 you know they all have that independence. It's not up to any leader to tell uh, individuals what their beliefs should be. What I did tell them, uh, and I was adamant about it, uh, the group, and it wasn't Sam, but the group, uh, you, you can't compare anything to the Holocaust. It's, it's, it's disgusting, actually, that anyone uh, would compare that. So uh, I told him he has to be very mindful of uh, groups that he's uh, talking to, speaking to. But in saying that, with all my MPPs, I can't follow their schedules. I can't dictate on their private time uh, what they're what they're doing, what they aren't doing. So I uh, I had a, a very good conversation with uh, Sam. Trust me. Follow up. Thank you, Premier. Um, I'm wondering also when uh, how is the pilot project going with the pharmacies, and when do you anticipate that pharmacies will start giving? Um, injections, vaccinations in cities like Hamilton. Yeah, so, you know, something, the, the pharmacies, I, I think uh, they're, they're going to do a great job. Uh, we're running parallel with uh, mass vaccination centers, and there's just a massive amounts of them. Uh, uh, Rexall is, I think there's 260 Rexall locations underneath the Rexall banner. There's the IDA, there's the Guardians Medicine Shop that are over 11 Hundred. Then we have the uh, Walmart's 157 uh, stores. And then we have Costco's that have 35. And then we have Shoppers that's, uh, I believe, uh, two, 260. And then they have the uh, Lob. I'm sorry, 680. I apologize. And uh, Loblaw's 200. And, uh, I think about 240. And so, and then then we have the independents. We have the independents that are about a thousand. So the the output. Uh, power, if everyone ramps up, uh, is staggering. It's absolutely staggering. Again, if we do even 3,000, conservatively speaking, they, they tell me in some cases they can get up to 100, depending on the size of the pharmacy. But even if we do 50 a day, that's 150,000 just on the pharmacies, not to mention the mass vaccination centers. So we have what I don't want to do, I don't want to ramp up 3,000. We're going to ramp up uh, another 300. We're going to bring it up to about 700, and then we're going to ramp it up over 1,000 in a couple more weeks. And and then uh, when we get more, I'll just uh, uh, unleash it. 3,000, 3,200, go full steam, and uh, we'll be pumping this stuff out like uh, like we've never seen before. Sorry, we're just going to go to one question on the floor here from sure. Jamie from City TV. Yeah. Um, this is just breaking. You might not have been briefed about it. Um, Bloomberg is reporting that the Biden, Biden administration is uh, planning to send vaccines north to Canada, 1.5 million. A, do you know about it? B, your thoughts about uh, them sharing their vaccines now? Oh, God bless America. They're coming to our rescue. Thank God. I've been bugging Trump. I've been bugging Biden, all of them. They must get sick of Doug Ford asking for help. But our, our greatest uh, partner, our greatest trading partner, our greatest friend in the world, uh, President Biden, thank you. And once I get them, I will call you the champion, but I need to get the delivery first. So, so thank you, and uh, I appreciate it. Uh, we've been waiting. That's what true neighbors do. You, you help each other out in, in a crisis. And I, I understand they got to get their, their uh, people done first. I, I'd be no different, but thank you. Bring it on. If we have to go down there and pick them up, I'll drive down there in my pickup and pick them up if we have to. Well, it's unconfirmed. I heard rumors, but let's. Uh, this is good news. If they can help out, uh, God bless them. We'll, we're ready. We'll take all the vaccines you can give us. So that's f fabulous news. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.